Good morning, good morning, online family, Destiny Port Christian Church, and all the saints. We want to thank you so much for tuning in as we get into the Word of God. This is your host here, Pastor Josh Moyo. It's been awesome to see for the past few weeks when we have uh, started on this virtual life that everyone is uh, getting into it. And thank you so much for your comments and um, constructive criticism, as I call it, for us to improve and make things better. I want to share with you on a title that I've uh, uh, given today, When Bad Things Happen to Good People. Because uh, in the midst of crisis, there are a lot of questions that often people confuse. The devil, God, ourselves. So please journey with me. I'll be giving you really, I want to talk to you like your father this morning. And uh, the idea is to give you some pointers and principles that have helped shape my life as I walk with God. And um, let's get ourselves ready right now as we get into the word of God. song that was sung that we liked so much in DCC. I want us to sing that song and let's see where God is taking us. And it says Jehovah is your name Jehovah is your name Jehovah is your name Jehovah is your name mighty warrior mighty warrior great in battle Jehovah is your name mighty warrior mighty warrior bred in battle Jehovah is your name sing it to yourself as you see God working in your life Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah. Your name, mighty warrior, mighty warrior. Oh, Jesus. Jehovah is your name. Mighty warrior, mighty warrior. Oh, Great in battle, Jehovah is your name, mighty warrior, man. Great in battle, Jehovah is your. Shall we pray? Father, your word is alive. Your word is you. We can't live apart from your word. We declare that this morning our God is endowed upon us, Lord, to hear your word. Give us the ability to hear. Listening ears, understanding hearts. That God will leave this place once again knowing that men cannot live by bread alone but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 
Morning, Dustin family. Once again, thank you for joining us. And uh, remember, for more encouraging messages, be sure to follow and like us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram. And uh, please make sure that you hit the subscribe button on YouTube. And remember to tap that not notification bell so you can get messages from us whenever we post a new video. Also, following on today's sermon, you have the opportunity today to partake on Holy Communion. So make sure that you get your emblems ready. And uh, this will be coming up at the end of the sermon. And while it's we are at it, let's remember our tithes and offerings. Because sometimes my ever thinking that, okay, now that is virtual, we can give. No, we continue to give. And our online details, you'll get them from our uh, admin department. So make sure that we follow through on that one. And as well, uh, both North and South Campus, uh, you'll be getting the details uh, later on, on your WhatsApp groups, on, on your mobile phones, messages. May God bless you. Let's get into the word of God. Let's see what God wants to do to us. Let's declare once again. Mighty warrior, great in battle, Jehovah is your name. Mighty warrior, mighty warrior, great in battle. Declare it again. Mighty warrior, mighty warrior, great in battle, Jehovah is your name. You have your Bibles. Please tune in with me as we discuss. I want to bring my text this morning from two biblical characters one is from the old testament and the one is in the new testament that's david and that's paul at a time in david's life he has arrived in ziklag saul has been in pursuit of his life wanting to kill him things are happening and it's a terrible situation for him when he came back from the cave of adulam with all these men that were around him, 600 of them. Upon arrival in Ziklag, the whole city bent down. But not only that, they found out as well that his wives, his children, possessions, they've been taken. Something happens in the life of a leader. Even though you are not the cause of a pandemic and a crisis. Even though you are not the one that was responsible for it. Those that were on his side supporting him, David, they're now finding themselves in a precarious position because possessions are gone, cities burned, the wives are taken away, children are gone. It's a sad day in the city of David in Ziklag. One or two things you find yourself confronted with and you wonder which way to take. Either you kill yourself, you run away, and of course, both of those situations, it's a lose-lose. But David teaches us some principles that I believe you and I can learn from. When bad things happen to good people, and I'm sure you can relate with that for you and I as we follow together. You know the scripture, 1 Samuel chapter 30, and... Uh, David has arrived, and I want, to, I want us to read it so that for context, so that you can understand what's happening. It happened when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day. The Amalekites had invaded the south. Ziklag attacked Ziklag and burned it with fire. So this is not your just looting of few goods, then people going away. This is not just like some form of a criminal act that has been done by, you know, guys that are hungry and they've gone away. They burned it with fire. Made sure that it was burned down. And they taken captive the women and those who were there. From small to great. Which means they left no stone unturned. They did not kill anyone. But carried them away. And went their way. Isn't it amazing? Because that reminds you of our chief enemy, the devil. 
John chapter 10 and verse 10, the Bible says, he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Right? Initially, before the devil destroys you, before he kills you, he likes to steal as much of your joy as possible. Steal as much of your peace as possible. Wants to destroy as much of the things, your support pillars around you, before he kills you. This is what the Amalekites are doing. They took everything that was life. And the Bible says, they carried them away and they went their way. So David and his men came to the city and there it was. Burned with fire. Their wives, their sons, their daughters taken captive. Then David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. I wanted to catch that because for me, that's very important for where we are going because I'm going to give you some principles that I've applied from time to time in my life. Principles that I've applied during this time of COVID-19 pandemic and principles that I believe you can uh, apply over your life on an individual level, on a family level, on a marriage level, emotional, psychological, and spiritual level. No matter what you are facing right now, because during this pandemic, a lot of things are happening. Some have lost their jobs. Some that don't know who to go, who to go to, and where to go to. And you have a different kinds of problems that have been preserved that have actually uh, occurred because of this virus. But I've got news for you because I believe the word that I have for somebody today is to encourage you, is to build hope again when all hope is lost, when bad things happen to good people. We understand when bad things happen to bad people. But what do you do when bad things catch you when everything was normal? Living your life and you enjoying your life. And that's what I want to bring across to us. David is in such precarious situation. It's traumatic. It's a sad day. It's a sorrowful day in Ziklag. But when he finds himself in that, the Bible says they started weeping. Now I want you to realize something when children is children are crying, right? But you know, when, when big men start to weep, that tells it's a sad day in the history of David and his men. It's a sad day in Ziklag. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says they wept until they had no more power to weep. It's a pointer. I want you to get as I repeat that same sentence. They wept until they had no more power to weep. But you would think by that time God heard them. And I've often said to God's people, get this as a footnote. God is not moved by the tears you cry. God is moved by his word. When you apply the word to your tears, it works. When you weep, just for the sake of weeping, complaining, and whinging, and poor me, poor me, that doesn't quite work. God is only moved by his word. Because God is the word. John 1 and verse 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. If tears were the only thing that moved God, and if tears were at the pivotal mark or what moved God, surely you will understand that we won't be having poverty because people are still poor, and people are still suffering, and people are still crying. But only those who cry to the Lord, they get their victory. thought I should say that because that's important. They cried and they wept until they had no more power to weep. John 11, 35, when Jesus wept, listen to the statement, followed by lifting up his eyes, Father, I thank you that you heard me. Lazarus did not come out of the grave because Jesus wept. Lazarus came out of the grave because Jesus applied the principle of his word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And when he spoke the word, the grave gave in. Get that as we go together. Verse 5, 1 Samuel chapter 30, David's two wives, Ahinom, the Jesus and Abigail, the widow of Nabal, the Carmelite, had been taken captive too. Now David was greatly distressed. Watch where it goes. They have wept, but the, the distress is still there. They had wept, but the problem is still there. They had wept, but the depression is still there. And somebody's catching me. They had wept, but the issue has not been resolved. Watch, 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 watch what it says. David was greatly distressed for the people now were speaking of stoning him. In weeping, they wept together. <laughs> 
But when they wipe away their tears, they are now thinking, we are now sober. Now that the problem is not solved, David, you are no longer on our side. You are now our enemy. Sad day in the life of a leader. But listen to what the Bible says there. David in his distress, people speaking of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved. Every man for his sons and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. I think I wanted to talk about that because when bad things happen to good people, what should guide you are the principles that has worked, that has been proven all time. Doesn't help to go all emotional about it. There is place for emotions. Don't mistake me. I cry sometimes, but it's important for you to know that the answer is not in your crying, but the answer is in who you are crying to. Because sometimes these tears can be then can they can become very funny in our lives as we walk with God. So I want you to check with me right now as we get together into what God is wanting us to learn. Listen to this. When people are grieved, every man grieving for their sons and for their daughters, David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. He strengthened himself in the Lord his God. What do I want you to catch? I want you to catch the first thing that you and I should do, what was done by David. When all hell is breaking loose. It's very easy, very common to run everywhere, hither and thither, to try and find the solution. It's very easy to be disorientated. It's very easy to find yourself all sorts. It's very easy for you to touch this and touch that, try this and try that. And we see it all around us during even this pandemic. You are, you are told this and that and a lot of social media messages that are coming there. They, can, they leave you confused. They leave you distressed. They leave you grieved. They leave you with questions. Where is the solution? But let me help you, child of God. When bad things happen to good people, here are a few things that I wanted to get. Number one, God cannot touch my life negatively without the devil's permission. What that means is, it is important that every tragedy that strikes in your life, God will not allow it to touch your life without his permission. So when the devil strikes, you should always know that God has got something that is very important you want to produce in your life. And I, I want to walk slow there because it's very important. I'm sure to those that you remember, it was I think one man of God who said this. The problems in your life actually happen under three categories or three areas. Every situation, every tragedy that you encounter in your life is either self-inflicted, which means you are the cause. And the truth be told, it has been said that 70% of all our problems are the problems we inflict upon ourselves. And we blame the devil about them. We blame God about them. It's important. Catch that as a pointer. Every situation that is tough, every tragedy, every traumatic experience that we find ourselves in, 70% of that, not all of them, 70% of those that are self-inflicted. You cause that. If you are abusing your own children and then they leave the house, stop crying that my children don't love me because you are the cause. If your marriage is not working just because uh, both of you as adults can't sit down and talk and you're all yelling at one another, that tells you that actually it's not the devil the cause, it's you. There comes a time in your life where you need to understand how many of my problems am I inflicting on me and I blame the devil about it. I blame God about them. Some problems happen in our life, 70% of them or 80, that are self-inflicted. But number two, problems that take place in our lives, not only are they also self-inflicted, but problems can be satanic inspired. And we, we, know, we know how the enemy would like to throw curveballs at us and he would try to do things in our lives just so that uh, he can take us out of the game. And we call that when a situation is certain inspired or devil inspired, orchestrated, we call that a temptation. Jesus, when he's in the wilderness, he's tempted by the devil. What's a temptation? 
anything that the devil brings across your life in order for him to take you out of the game. When the devil tempts you, he's not tempting you to try and say, oh, I was just jogging. That's not how the devil works. When the devil attacks you with temptation, he wants to get you out of the game. He wants to kill you. He wants to destroy you. So he can use anything and everything to bring you to a place where he controls your life. So problems can be self-inflicted and problems can be certain inspired, but also the problems can be God allowed. And uh, we'll see, because now when you go to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 12, you'll see something there that I call a God allowed situation. Chapter 12 of the book of 2 Corinthians and from verse 7. And least I should be exalted above measure. The apostle Paul is talking. By the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me. A messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, listen now, concerning this thing, Paul says in verse 8, I pleaded with the Lord, not once, not twice, three times, that it might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Principles that are key, that I believe can help you as we journey with God. Problems can be self-inflicted. I am the cause. Problems can be certain inspired. And when the devil brings them, he wants to take you out of the game. He wants to take you out of your faith. He wants to take you out of your walking with God. That's his desire. To steal, to kill, and to destroy. Or thirdly, when it's God permitted or God allowed, it's because God wants to show himself strong on your behalf. So that means it becomes very important. So your interpretation of what deliverance is all about, let it be expanded. Because Psalm 34 verse 19, I've said this to you before, Many are the afflictions of the righteous ones. Oh, okay. So bad things can also happen to good people. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivers them out of them all. Truth is, if it is God permitted or God allowed, God is going to get the glory out of that and he will get all the praise in Jesus' mighty name. Deliverance is not only God delivering you out of it, Psalms 23, we know the verse in verse 5 when the devil saw, Yet though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. For thou art with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. What that means is, certain times when problems come into our life as God's people, when bad things happen to good people, sometimes God does not deliver me out of it all, but God delivers me through it all. Through it all, that means he has to make me walk through it in the valley. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, we already know that they were found themselves in a precarious position. Thirdly, God delivers us not only through, but God delivers us in it. He's the keeper of the righteous. The God who delivers out of, all, of, out of it all, and the God who delivers you through it all, he's the same God who can keep you and protect you in it all. Paul cries out three times for him to be delivered out of a thorn in the flesh. Theologians have been baffled, wanting to find out what was it. But I don't want you to worry yourself about that. I just wanted to understand principles I wanted to understand. God will not allow the enemy to touch my life without his permission. Number two, something for you to understand. The devil was defeated on the cross of Calvary 2,000 years ago, but the devil is yet to be dethroned. What that means is, we are still living in a world that is broken with broken systems. We are still living in the cosmos that is governed by the God of this world. In 1 Corinthians 4 and verse 4, the devil is the God of this world. And therefore, in order for you to achieve the victory and deliverance around bad stuff that happened for you, it's always important that you keep that balance as you walk with him. When bad things happen to good people, it is important for you to understand that God's hand 
will be lifted up and will be magnified in whatever you do as walk with him. And I want to then take you through some of the principles that can help you to understand how then should I approach my life. Here we find David as our first character. When he finds himself in Ziklag and he finds himself that he is uh, confronted by a real problem, a real situation, the Bible says he strengthened himself. And I've been throwing around that word in verse 6 where it says, David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. You know, I love words and I always want to understand the meaning behind what God is doing here. Because you would think that generally as David was a man after God's own heart, he would have run straight to God. But the Bible says before he goes to God, and I believe it's a point that you and I want to catch. When people wept, and people starting now picking up stones, wanting to stone him after they'd wept, he's in distress, his people are in distress, they are all grieved. They are all seeing a situation that is irreversible. He wants us to see something in verse 6. He strengthened himself in the Lord. Just say that with me online. I want you just to say that with me. I will strengthen myself in the Lord. Just say that to yourself. I will strengthen myself in the Lord. Next time, before you confront a situation that seems to be causing you pain, causing you sleepless nights, before you think about it and worry about it. I wanted to apply this principle. I want to strengthen myself in the Lord. Why is that important? Because we now understand Hebrews 11 verse 6. God will only back up his word. Important. And he says in his word in Hebrews 11 and verse 6. Without faith. It's impossible. For you and I to please God. So, strengthening myself in the Lord, that means find the scriptures that apply before I approach my problem. Let me save you from depression. Let me save you from worries that is unwarranted. Let me save you from heartache and pain that you don't need in your life. Bad things will happen to you as a child of God. Yeah? You will weep as a child of God. Yes, you will. But after your weeping and after you reach the end of the road and you do not know what else to do and where to go, let me help you. First Samuel 30 and verse 6. And David strengthened himself. What is he doing? He's building up his muscles. He's like saying, it's time for me to go to my spiritual fitness gym. Let me go and start lifting up the weights. God is my rock. Who can be against me? The Lord is my shield. Whom shall I be afraid of? Indeed, the Lord is my light and my salvation. And whom shall I be afraid? People are standing there with stones. David, come with a solution. But David is saying, I know the Lord will make a way. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. Psalms 121. From whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord God Almighty. What is David saying? Oh, I remember that when the children of Israel crossed the Red Sea, God proved himself as Jehovah Shammah, the Lord who was ever there. What is David saying? David is reminding himself of what this God is. That I remember when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when they find themselves in the fiery furnace, when they were inside the fiery furnace, I can almost see Shadrach saying, Shadrach, what's happening around us? What is there in the fire? And Shadrach saying, I look at myself. My clothes are still there. My hair is still not singed. What's happening to me? And I hear Shadrach saying, Jehovah Nisi, the Lord my banner. He protects those that are in the fire. And I hear Meshach saying, I am looking at myself. And I'm wondering, check. There seems to be somebody. There is a presence that is in this fire. And I hear Shadrach saying, Meshach, what are you talking about? I am saying, the Lord who is ever present. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord our peace. He is here with us. And I can hear as the beginning to talk, Abednego also declaring, guys, what are you talking about? I see Jehovah 
Mukadesh, the Lord, our righteousness, and the one who sanctifies us. Our sanctifier is with us. He is with us to show himself strong. He is with us to strengthen us even in this predicament. I do not know what David thought about, but the Bible says the key verse there, he strengthened himself in the Lord. Where do you go when things are hard? Where do you go when life is tough? Where do you go when problems are looming up against you? I'm here to say to somebody, but David encouraged himself in the Lord. He began to brag himself about the names of God. Jehovah Tzit Kenu, the Lord my God, who works in my life on my behalf. The Lord God Almighty who rules and reigns even over my life. I do not know what you think about this God. But I want to say to somebody as a principle. Never consult God until you are strengthened yourself. Because if you consult God before you strengthen yourself by his word. You go there complaining. You go there whinging. You go there crying out without a solution. Because prayer was not designed for you to go to God and complaining about the devil. Let me say that again. Prayer was not designed for you to go to God complaining about the devil. But prayer was designed for you to communicate. For you to relate with your father. For you to fellowship with him. So the best way to do when you work with God. Let me give you now these three steps. Number one, strengthen yourself. Remind him of his promises. God, you promised. Your name is Jehovah Tzidkeno, the Lord my righteousness. Your name is Jehovah Mishvad, the Lord of justice and God who is impartial. You are Jehovah Chazed. That's those are the names of this Jehovah God. God who overlooks over my pain. As I'm surrounded right now in Ziklag, my wives are taken away. My possessions are gone. My sons and daughters have been taken away. All these men are speaking of stoning me. He's in grief. He's in distress. But the Bible says he encouraged himself first in the Lord. I want to say to somebody here today, no matter what you face in life, Bad things will happen to good people. Bad things will go through pain. Bad things will go through, will happen as well to, to great people. Bad things will take place in the righteous one's lives. You and I as God's people, we are not exonerated. We are not immune from going through pressure. We are not immune going through difficulties. We will all go through difficulties. But I want to say to somebody, it's a time you remind God. How do you strengthen yourself in the Lord? David reminded himself, Jehovah Mogadesh is the Lord who sanctifies me. Jehovah Shalom, you are the Lord my peace. I remember you are Jehovah Shama, the Lord who is ever present. You are Jehovah Nisi, the Lord who is victorious banner over his people. And I think he remembered these days when he was looking after his father's ship. And he says, I know you are not only Jehovah Nisi, but you became Jehovah Roy, the Lord my shepherd. You shepherded me before the bear and the lion. And I killed them, Lord God Almighty. You are the same God that I believe in. Jehovah Roy and Jehovah Nagar, the Lord who overshadows my life. Your presence is all that I desire over my life. What did jo David say about this God? I believe he started bragging, finding all the names about God. Why is it important to pick up on the names of God? Because God has exalted his name above his word. And God always will back up his word. It is important, ladies and gentlemen, that some trust in chariots, some trust in horses. But as for you and I, our hope is in the name of the Lord God Almighty. And I believe, I don't know who started this song, but I believe he started singing again. Mighty warrior, great in battle, Jehovah, he, your mighty warrior, mighty great in battle. When was the last time, child of God, when you sang a good song, but not just a good song, a godly song, when things were rough, when there was no hope, when darkness was looming around you, David reminds us the names of God. Can I say a statement to you? 
what you feed the most grows the most. Faith grows by what you feed it with. You see, faith works in both ways. If you exalt your problems, your faith will grow negatively in that regard. That is why we realize there are people who believe their giants, their Goliath is bigger than their God. What you feed the most grows the most, which means what is faith to a child of God as you believe in God is faith to those who don't believe in God. Because if you believe that your pain is greater than God, your asthma is greater than God, your cancer is greater than God, what you feed the most will grow the most. If you tell yourself I'm insignificant, I am nothing, I'm just a reject, they did not want to help me, I was abused, I am a nobody. What you feed the most grows the most. But I want to invoke on you today, child of God. And I want to say to you right now, the reason why we sing praise and worship, it is not just an item waiting for the word, but it is encouraging yourself in the law. Jehovah is your name is directed to you. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. Mm. Jehovah is your name. David got that. He strengthened himself. It's a powerful principle, isn't it? When you get on a flight, the air hostesses and air hosts, they will tell you that before you take care of yourself in case of emergency, put the mask on yourself before you put it on the baby. Makes sense. Before you encourage anyone else, he couldn't encourage them. They were picking up rocks to stone him. But he knew his secret place. I want to call you in this time and in this hour. Find your secret place. Psalms 91, the Bible says, David records as he speaks through Moses. He says, he that dwelleth in the secret place. Hey, hey, you encourage yourself from the secret place. When you encourage yourself in your secret place, you'll find hope. Encouragement from the secret place, you find power again. It's time you visit your spiritual gym and go there and begin to lift up the weight of faith. Exercise your spiritual muscles of prayer. You say, God, I know you. You have done it before. You took care of my parents. Surely you're going to take care of me. You took care of my children. Surely you take care of me. Ah, oh, that's what David knew. He looked at him and said, He's Jehovah Ahava. That's the Lord who is patient. That's the Lord who loves me. He looked at him and he says, Jehovah Elohim, the Lord who is worthy to be praised and worthy of my worship. But he did not stop there. Jehovah Kwana, they have taken my family. They have taken my children. They have taken my wives. They have taken my possessions. But I know you as Jehovah Kwana. You have never heard that. But Jehovah Kwana, it means the Lord who is jealous. He protects his own. If he can't deliver me through it, if he can't deliver me out of it, he will keep me and protect me in there. Hey, there is a word in Hebrew, Jehovah Hoya. And that word, it means the Lord who is self-creation, self-sufficient. The one who can be created, who was there before the beginnings began. The beginner of beginnings, Jehovah Hoya. Jehovah Kadesh, the one who is holy and the one who is pure. Jehovah Shaddai, the mighty and omnipotent one. Jehovah Elohim or Jehovah Elohim. He's the Lord who passes over by us. And Jehovah Kabad, the Lord who is weighty and glorious. He is on my side and that God is on your side. Destiny, I want you to understand that on a Sunday morning, get encouragement from the self-sufficient one. 
Get your encouragement from the omnipotent God who is all powerful. Get your encouragement from the one who is omnipresent, the one who is always present. Get your encouragement from the omniscient one, the one who is all wise and all knowing. He is an immutable God. He is our rock. He is our refuge. He encouraged himself in the Lord. And obviously, the last portion of that verse in verse 8. Listen why now it says, when he found himself strong from the spiritual gym, from the secret place. Listen what verse 8 says of 1 Samuel chapter 30. I love it. David inquired of the Lord. I repeat, never inquire of the Lord before you strengthen yourself. That's the purpose of fellowship. It's the purpose of coming together. To strengthen ourselves. Build up our faith. Jude verse 20. He says, building up your faith on your most holy faith. Building up yourselves on your most holy faith. Purpose of singing worship is designed not to feel pity for yourself, but to strengthen your faith. Build your spiritual muscles by the power and the authority of the word of God. When God's word tells us in verse 8, David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And God answered him, Pursue David, for you shall surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. I thought I should say that to you, that before we close and pray right now, even this crisis, will pursue and overtake and we are going to recover all. I know predictions that have been made by the banks, the World Bank, IMF Bank. I know what is being uh, predicted as far as the economy of the world is concerned. But I believe, watch my words, I believe in a God who can make things that take years to build overnight. Surely, we will pursue Whatever was lost, we will overtake it. Whatever was lost, we will come out better. Better as God's people. Better as a nation. Better as Australians. Better wherever you come from. We will come out strong because our God is on our side. But where does it start? Speak it to yourself. Encourage yourself. Remind yourself of all the notes you were writing when you were in church. Remind yourself of all the things that God has done over your life. Get your spiritual stamina and stand before God. So, Father, what's up? What do I do in this situation? When you are sober and alert and vigilant, you will come out from the throne room with an answer. But if you are not sober before God, you will come out bitter. I know people and Christians today that are bitter against God. Bitter against church. Bitter against pastors. Bitter against anything that is called faith. Because it is possible when you think God is like a toy that I use. When I want things, he must just give it to me. Ladies and gentlemen, as I come before God in prayer, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for three types of people. I want to pray for people that are sitting right now, watching with us right now online. And you're saying, I want to be introduced to this God. I've been going into wrong things whenever I find myself stressed. I've been going into the bottle of alcohol whenever I find myself under stress. I go for drugs when I find myself stressed. I go myself to wrong addresses to find peace. But very soon you realize your life is in pieces. But I want to introduce you today, the mighty warrior. Is great in battle. When bad things happen to good people, good people strengthen themselves about what they know about their God. Mighty warrior, great in battle, Jehovah, he your name. Where have you
have you been going to? Who have you been consulting? What solutions have you found? I present you to you today a God who can be trusted, everlasting, eternal, omnipotent, immutable, never ending God. He's the bread of life. He's the word of hope. He's here to give you that life. You want me to pray there with you? Just hold your heart with me and I'll pray for you right now. You say, I need Jesus in my life. I need this God in my life. I've never heard about him. I know about churches. I know about the Bible. But I've never been in contact with this God. I want to pray for you. Let me pray for you. Say this prayer with me. Whatever you are, whatever you're watching from your device, from your TV, or from your computer, I want to pray for you. Say, Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive my sins and wash me. I surrender today to you who know how to strengthen the weak. In this time of stress, in this time of distress, in this time of grief, strengthen me. When he strengthens you, you have a sense of direction. So, Father, thank you that you'll be with them. You'll guide them in all their ways. In Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer, you belong to him. You're a child of God. I want to pray for the second group. Second group are those now that are find themselves on the fence. You do not know really that you are in or you're out in your faith. If you were to be asked really that if God were to come down today and ask you and bring you in the judgment hall, what would you say about your life? Happy? Good person? How are you valuing and how are you looking at your life? If you are not so sure that if you were to die today, surely you don't know where you are going. And therefore you resort, you resort to take an ideology that says, I don't know. You can know today. Take Jesus in your life. And I want you to say to him now, for you, you are not praying a prayer that is a sinner's prayer, but you are praying a prayer that says, I'm coming back home. Say this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, I recommit myself back to you. To know you. To love you. Walk with me and guide me. My fire for you. My zeal for you. I want it back in my life. I want to belong to you again. In Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless you. Thank you once again, my viewers. I pray for all of you children of God that are here right now. And maybe you are forced and faced with the difficulties and you do not know exactly what seems to be happening around your life. I do want you to know our hope is in the name of the Lord. When you call upon the name of the Lord, you will be saved. And I thank you once again for joining us. And I remember what I've said before. If you want to follow through with some of the messages that we are giving every time on Facebook, please do so. Like us and subscribe us. And when you do that, you will see that God is going to bless your life. And as you do that, I also want to encourage you. Remember, I've started a series on different topics. Tomorrow at 7 p.m., dreams. If you've got dreams that you have, that you feel, I've had these dreams that keep on coming back or whatever the case may be. And if you remember them, I'm going to give you my personal number right now. I want you to send them. Send me a text and then I, tomorrow I'll be talking about them and I'll be able to help you interpret some of those in Jesus' mighty name. 0433-165-981. That's my number. If you've got a dream that you have and you feel you want to follow through and you want to, you've got a question about it, tomorrow I'll be talking about a lot, just delving into the issue of dreams. But not only that, on Wednesdays, I'm teaching on the signs of the end times. And I'm giving you, from an opinionated point of view, on my, on my behalf, because I believe it's important that we can present what we know according to the scriptures. There are three views that run up and down, and there, are, there is actually a view that doesn't believe at all in rapture. But I want to give you what I believe as a teacher of the word, because I will stand one day responsible so receive these teachings tomorrow it's on dreams 
Wednesdays is on the signs of the end times. Join us at the same time at 7 p.m. May God bless you. I love you all. Let me pray for your blessing of God over your life. Lord, I thank you for your people. I thank you for the opportunity for us to watch together online. I pray that God is going to build us on the authority of the word of God. And thank you for what you're doing, oh God, in our lives as guests in the family and for all those that have joined us online from all over the world. May you bless their lives, bless their families, strengthen their faith as they walk with you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Remember, there is Holy Communion coming up. And uh, let's give as well our tithes and our offerings and God will bless you as we do that in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And we are so glad that you could join us for this Sunday service. Now remember, you can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. And stay connected to us via our website, destinyempowered.org.